Hello everyone and welcome to our homeschool lecture. You guys are already familiar with video lectures and this is just going to be exactly like that. So here we go. This is our last lecture for the chapter on ancient Greece. How did the Greeks feel about music? Good question. Music was one of the greatest arts for the Greeks. They had two gods which were over music and that is Apollo and the Muses. There were two gods which were over music, Apollo and the Muses. Two gods over music, Apollo and the Muses. We actually get our English word music from Muses. The Greeks were always trying to create an ideal representation of an object or a person. They wanted it to look like the real thing. By looking back at the art of the Greeks, we can see how they lived, how they dressed, and even what they imagined their gods and goddesses to look like. If you look at page 221 in your textbook, you will see the architectural feature that the Greeks perfected and that would be the column. The column is one of the most famous things that the Greeks created as far as architecture go. And we'll see the Romans use that and we use it today. The fanciest column or the most elaborate is the one on the far right hand side and that is the Corinthian column. Now if you'll turn over your books to page 222, you'll see a whole page about the Parthenon. The Parthenon was a temple dedicated to Athens and it was located on the Acropolis in Athens. So it was a temple dedicated to Athena and it was located on the Acropolis in Athens. The Parthenon was located on the Acropolis in Athens. The Parthenon was located on the Acropolis in Athens. Let me say that one more time. The Parthenon was located on the Acropolis in Athens. If you remember back to a previous section, we talked about what the Acropolis was, and that was a, city, a hill on, in the middle of the city of Athens. And this section talks about some different optical illusions that artists use when designing the Parthenon. The stairs were a little higher in the center, and so, but from far away, they looked completely flat. And also the columns lean slightly inward and they're larger in the middle than they are at the top and the bottom. And again, that makes the columns appear straight and perfect. And so those are two optical illusions that are used in the Parthenon. All right, quick little review here. What qualities in a work of art were important to the Greeks? They were balance, harmony, simplicity, beauty, and completeness. Where could you look to find the work of Greek painters? Some of those things could include tableware, perfume bottles, and murals. Where would you look to find the work of Greek sculptors? Obviously, statues are going to be the first thing you would think of, but also coins, columns, murals, mosaics, and even embroidery are all places that you can find the work of Greek sculptors. All right, athletics. The Greeks believed that athletics were very important. It's on the slide, write it down. Athletics were very important to the Greeks. We even get our word athlete from the Greek word for athletics. The special event that celebrates athletics that came from the Greeks is of course the Olympic Games. Back in ancient Greece, they held the Olympics to honor the gods and some of the features of ancient Olympics are similar to what we have in modern day Olympics. Athletes come from all over to compete and some of the events that the ancient Oh, the ancient Greeks competed in are, even, are similar to the events that we have today. Obviously, there are some differences, though. We don't have any chariot races in our modern-day Olympics. 
men and women can compete, not just men. We get we don't get crowns anymore, we get medals, and we have way more events available to us than the ancient Greeks did. Plus, we now have Summer Olympic Games and Winter Olympic Games. You're gonna do a workbook page, or maybe you've already done it, about the Greek Olympics. I hope you have fun doing that and planning out what you think the program for an, an Olympic Games in ancient Greece could have looked like. I can't wait to see your advertisements that you include in that activity. All right, moving on to our very last section here. What caused Greek culture to spread throughout the Western world? Alexander the Great's military com conquests united much of what was known of the world at that point in time, and the people were in, that he conquered were encouraged to adopt the Greek culture. And so because of that, then Greek culture ended up spreading through the Western world. Next focus question, how is the Greek language important to the spread of the gospel? Write this down. Greek was the common language of the empire and it's the language the New Testament was originally written in. Two things for you to write down. One, it was the common language of the empire and two, it's the language the New Testament was originally written in. I'll say it one more time and then you can pause the video if you need to. Greek was the common language of the empire and it was the language that the New Testament was originally written in. Actually, Jesus would have spoken both Hebrew and Greek. So when you think about Greek, think about Jesus because that's what he would have talked. All right. So, how did the spread of Greek culture actually happen? Well, it started in 338 BC when a man named Philip of Macedonia took over the land that we think of as being Greece. Then King Philip died and his son, Alexander, ended up taking over. Alexander was 22 years old when he took over Macedonia and Greece. Alexander had a goal. And his goal was to spread Greek culture all over the world. And he was extremely successful. He conquered gr for Greece all the way south down to Egypt and all the way east over to India. So he conquered a huge amount of land. And we call him Alexander the Great now because he was a military genius and he basically conquered the known world but his reign was very, very short. He died when he was 33 years old, so he only ruled for about 11 years. We're not, historians aren't exactly sure what Alexander the Great died from, but we do know that he had a high fever for about 10 days before he died, so that might have led to his death. Now, what you need to write down about Alexander the Great is what happened when he died. After Alexander the Great died, his empire was split between his four generals. After Alexander the Great died, his empire was split between his four generals. After Alexander the Great died, his empire was split between his four generals. So because the Greeks conquered so much land, the Greek culture was spread throughout this whole region. The Greek philosophies were adopted, Greek inventions were used, Greek art spread to these areas, and probably most importantly, the Greek language became the common language that was spoken. This impacted the Jewish people, remember we learned about Israel in our last chapter, because they lost the ability to read and study Hebrew which led to, you guessed it, the Septuagint. It was really important for everyone to be able to learn Greek because it was the common language used for business. And since you could speak the language of everybody around, you could travel and use Greek to help you. 
All right, quick review here. How is King Philip the Mas of Macedonia able to take control of Greece? Well, Greece was weak after the Peloponnesian War. Remember when Athens and Sparta fought against each other? And so he was able to come in and take over Greece. In what ways did Greek culture spread throughout Alexander's empire? Well, we have lots of ways. Drama, architecture, literature, art, science, math, history. All of those things were spread. And like we said before, Greek became the common language for the empire. And yes, of all the ancient civilizations we've studied so far, the ancient Greeks still impact our lives today. We have the Olympics, we have the Bible in our language today because it was written in Greek with the New Testament originally being written in Greek and the Septuagint. We have a form of government that goes back to the ancient Greeks. So the Greeks have influenced our lives more than any of the other cultures we've talked about so far. All right, quick dig and drill. Make sure you call out the answer like we normally do. Blank, the son of King Philip II of Macedonia, extended his rule as far east as India. And the correct answer is Alexander the Great. Next question, a term for being like the Greeks, we didn't cover this in lecture, but you would have read it in your textbook, is Hellenistic. Hellenistic means like the Greeks. All right, your next activity is going to be to complete a workbook page, page 127. It's in a separate um, assignment, and that is going to be your review for the last quiz for ancient Greece. Good luck.